Morning everyone. I only have three packages today for this mailbag, but I'm too impatient to see what's inside. I think I know what's inside this one, so it'll be last. So let's get started. Time for another mailbag video. First off, we have this one. It's uh, not too thick, and it says uh, capacitive element. I'm not really sure what that means, but let's see if I can cut it where there's nothing. Ah, okay. Most of you guys should know what this is. Let's take a closer look. So what this is, is a component tester. You get these online fairly cheap. I decided it's about time I get one. Also, I don't have the patience to open this. Not sure why they call it a capacitive element, but there we are. Screen, oh, I thought this, yeah, the screen's a little scratched up there. I don't know if you can see that. Hmm. Interesting. I don't think they have a plastic. I'll take a look. Oh, I think it does have a plastic. Real compelling video here. Me trying to peel a plastic protector. Ah, there we go. Perfect. Alright, so I guess all that's left to do is to boot it up and take a look. So here I have a 9 volt battery. Plug it into here. Okay, there's a zip socket. Just zip socket is just basically a uh, soft insert and clamp socket. The zip stands for zero insert force. I'm just going to click this and see if it turns on. Oh, <clears throat> it seems to have worked. Okay, so I'm going to take a resistor here. I'm not sure what value this is. Still haven't learned to read these bars, but I think together we'll be able to learn it on a future video. So I'm going to slap that in there. The unit turns off by itself, which is good. Straighten the legs a little bit. Clamp that down. Nope, doesn't seem to be working. It says the VBAT is really low. So let's see if we can switch this around to a different socket. Because I know the, um, there's only, I think there's only three of these contacts that actually work. Let's take a look here. There we go. 46.24K ohms. So probably a 47K resistor. Pretty nice, it seems to work. You can try it with a few different objects. I have transistors kicking around here, so let's see. We can get those. So I believe this is an NPN. It is a 2N3904. It's a pretty common transistor. Let's see if it's able to detect it. It's great that it works at such low voltage. Yep, there we go. NPN with a gain of 430 and a forward voltage of 686 millivolts. Pretty nice actually, I really like this thing. It's going to do some quick testing on some components and figure out what they are. It's pretty nice. Let's try something else. Let's try this LED. Should be able to put them in any which way. See, it's turning it on there, and there we go, diode, so full forward voltage 2.95, and a little bit of a capacitance on there, um, it just could be because it's a uh, the silicon inside. Okay, let's try one more thing, not sure if this can test polarized capacitors, but I have a 10 uh, microfarad 25 volt capacitor here, pretty sure it won't give me a maximum voltage, but it will tell me the approximate capacitance, I'm sure. Yep, 11.07 microfarads. V loss 1.0% and ESR 0.94 ohms. Pretty nice. So this, this device is great. If you don't have one, you should already get one. 
There's all sorts of different kinds. I think I just picked the cheapest one. I think this one was about $5 Canadian from AliExpress. But pretty cool. I like this. Well, I actually made a mistake. This actually cost me more than I thought. This was uh, $12 on AliExpress. But since I made the mistake, let me show you some extra stuff. So here I have a TIP120, which is a high power Darlington transistor. Um, we've got a FQP30NO6L, which is a MOSFET, power MOSFET. And we have an LM317. So I want to see how these things will fare on the tester. So this should be pretty simple. It should know it's a transistor, but at the very let, oh, the zip socket didn't stay down there. At the very least, there should be a fairly large um, gain on this. So here we go. It's weird how this battery is discharged so far. Uh, okay, so the HFE is 56, voltage forward 1.29. That's weird, the gain is so low. I wonder if it's because this battery is almost dead. The gain should be ridiculous on the TIP120, but oh well. But it did show us, actually I'll run it one more time. It did show us that there are two transistors, simply because, look at the voltage forward. It's roughly twice the regular um, diode drop. Maybe it's because it can't give enough current to the base in order to turn it on. I'm not sure. Maybe the current that it's available um, isn't actually fully opening the transistor, but I know these are fairly high current transistors. So next, let's try the MOSFET. So again, FQP30NO6L. The L means logic level, means I, I believe only five or under five volts needed to turn it on. So let's see here. Yeah, it is showing as a MOSFET. Uh, capacitance and yeah there you go the voltage to turn it on is 2.93 volts so you can turn these on with an Arduino and they're very high current uh, devices as long as you can keep them cool that is I, there's no um, forward voltage drop though I wanted to see the the on resistance or something but I guess I guess that's not really part of what this thing does and the last one is the LM317 this is a voltage regulator so let's see what this device gives us. I'm not sure if it'll figure it out. Yeah, it shows us two diodes with the forward voltage. Um, yeah, that's the feedback circuitry for the LM317. So it's not very, it's not that precise. I guess the library is not that big. But interesting here, they've got the pads for surface mount devices too. So. We can give that a shot once I get some service mount devices for future projects. All right, let's move on. Next up is this one, and this one says RC boat accessories times three. So I know what I ordered for the boat, but I didn't think it was going to be this big. But anyways, uh, this also means that this one, plus the universal joints from uh, a while ago, means that we're going to have to have a boat update video pretty soon. So look forward for that. Okay, and there we go. These are some propellers. Let's take a closer look. So this is uh, something that's very difficult to build at home is a decent operating propeller. So here we go. So what this is really is this uh, plastic propeller. And it's fairly large in size. Let me just grab my vernier caliper. So in diameter, let's see here, roughly 33 millimeters in diameter. So it's fairly big, but that's good because our boat's fairly big. Um, and I don't think our RPMs are going to be very high, so we're going to need a pretty big propeller to get moving along. Um, it has a brass-ish threaded collar on the inside here. So this will actually thread onto the prop shaft and then you use this jam nut here to keep it down. Um, I was hoping this would be 3 mils. It doesn't look 3 mils in diameter. It's very hard when you order stuff from China to know what exactly you're getting. No, this is a 3 millimeter uh, bolt so it doesn't fit in here. 
this is probably a 2 mil diameter which means uh, at least now I know what size of prop shaft I should be using it should be roughly 2 mils or at least something that's turned down to 2 mils at the other end so I've actually ordered three of these because you never know when you need a spare especially while doing testing also I figured if we don't have enough uh, go with the single motor we'll just make a double motor so we're gonna need at least two of these so there we go and that also means we've got a boat update video coming soon hopefully you're excited for that one and now for this one I'm so excited to see if this came in good shape the only indication we have here is PCB but my indication is how big this is this is roughly I'll just put it on my corner of my table about 25 mils by 25 mils I mean 25 centimeters by 25 centimeters that is and just to try to cut the packaging because I think this is fairly fragile and this I believe is the last piece we need for a 3D printer this is the heated bed for a 3D printer and it is damaged in shipping well that's kinda sucky um, it seems to be delaminating here too darn hopefully we can still use this but yeah let's take a closer look at this so how these things work is basically you've got contacts here uh, I believe these little guys here are for LEDs and then you just basically have tracks winding all the way around now on these they're actually pretty cool because they have um, two separate heating elements which are the resistive tracks and by resistive tracks we just mean sort of uh, narrow tracks that would create a resistance just by their length and um, so you can run these at 12 or 24 volt at 12 volt if you see pin 1 is where your positive goes and then your negative on 2 and 3 that means that the, uh, the, the windings sort of both connect to 1 but go into two different uh, traces and go to 3 and 2 like that so if you go 24 volts what you're doing really is you're putting the the current through both of them in series so they all go from 2 all the way around to 1 branch off to the other one to back to 3 so you have both in series and you put both in parallel when you put it at 12 volts which means you will have um, more current but less voltage and if you put 2 and 3 at 24 volts you'll have more voltage less current but both approximately the same output so here I have my multimeter I have it set to ohms I'll have to prop it up a little bit so you guys can see it and you'll see if I go 12 volts red on pin 1 make sure I'm on shot yep and uh, 2 negative get roughly almost 3 ohms so that's uh, 4 amps I guess and if I do the same thing over here roughly 3 ohms it's roughly 4 amps and if I go like this on the 24 volt setting yeah it's like double so basically it's uh, 2 windings or 2 uh, elements uh, both linked up at 1 so both of them come out of 1 and go to 1 or the other or one and the other so if you go from one to the other like this you get both and then individually you can tap them off like this very likely that we'll be running my 3d printer in 12 volt mode uh, so yeah uh, actually it depends we'll see I suppose we'll see how expensive the power supplies are because if I'm just using a PC power supply I'll go run 12 volts if I run a dedicated power supply, I'm probably going to buy a 24 volt. But yeah, I was excited to get this. It's a shame about the shipping damage. I'm going to have to contact the seller and I'll let you guys know how that goes. But my luck with AliExpress um, seller warranties isn't very great. And so this is the other side here. Some people can print directly onto here, but I don't think it's recommended. I do have glass that I can put on top of this, so that's pretty good. Um, also there are concerns about strain relief on the wires because if this moves back and forth like this there's no way to keep the strain relief um, active so we'll have to see what's what's going on here but this is basically the um, the, the Prusa 
uh, copy heat bed. And uh, this was also only $8, so it's pretty cheap to add a heated bed. Probably the first couple prints I'm going to run will be without this, just because the current um, requirements are much lower without a heat bed. And these three items, or three packages, make up today's mailbag. Thanks for watching.